Today's topic is nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. So, we will go for the introduction, then pathology, treatment, investigations, clinical features. So, introduction. So, as the name suggests, nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. So, it, it is combined with the nasopharynx. Angio means blood vessels. Fibroma is the tumor, benign tumor. So, it is a benign tumor of the blood vessels arising within the nasopharynx. So, it is a benign but locally aggressive tumor. It is a rare tumor, th though it is commonest of all the benign tumors of the nasopharynx. The exact cause is unknown, but it occurs mostly in the adolescent males. It is thought to be testosterone dependent. These patients have hematomatous needles of vascular tissue which get activated to form angiofibroma when male sex hormone is released. So here in the picture you can see in it opens uh, it is confined to the nasopharynx which opens anteriorly into the nasopharynx. Now site of origin and growth. It arises from the posterior part of the nasal cavity close to the superior margin of the sphenopalatine foramen and from here tumor grows into the nasal cavity, nasopharynx into the pterygopalatine fossa laterally and running behind the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus. Laterally tumor extends into the pterygomaxillary fossa and then to the infratemporal fossa and the chick. Now here in the picture you can see this is in the nasopharynx site. Now pathology. The exact etiology of the tumor is unknown but it tends to develop in males between 10 to 25 years old that is adolescent males. Histologically it is composed of fibrous connective tissue interspersed with variable proportion of the endothelium lined blood spaces. Now the vessels are just endothelium lined spaces with no muscle cord. Therefore, severe bleeding may occur on taking biopsy and surgical removal as these vessels cannot contract to stop the bleeding. Here in the picture you can see histopathological slide. Now extension of the tumor. Nasopharyngeal angiofibroma is a benign tumor but locally invasive and destroys the adjoining structures. It may extend into the nasal cavity, paranasal sinuses, pterygomaxillary fossa, orbits and cranial cavity that is in the medial cranial fossa. So here in the picture you can see the tumor within the nasopharynx. Here in the picture you can see the tumor within the right side nasopharynx. Now what are the clinical features? It will lead to the profusion and recurrent apostaxis, progressive nasal obstruction and hyponasal wise. Then conductive hearing loss and middle effusion due to the eustachian tube blockage. Then extension of the tumor in different directions produce symptoms like facial swelling, proptosis, diplopia, broadening of the nasal bridge, palatal bulge and cranial now pulsing. On examination, a pink or purplish lobulated soft tissue mass is seen within the nasopharynx. The, nas, the mass bleeds on the touch. Here in the picture you can see the bleeding, epistaxis or tartis media with effusion, proptosis, orbital edema and pain over the orbital reach. Now which are investigations. Plain X-ray of the nasopharynx lateral view and the paranasal sinuses occipital mantle view will show the presence of soft tissue mass within the nasopharynx. CT scan is particularly helpful to find the extent of the tumor. In addition, CT scan with contrast will show the vascularity of the tumor. So we have to do angiography with the contrast. MRI is also helpful especially to see the extension of the soft tissue tumor into the brain, orbit and infratemporal fossa. Here in the CCT uh, paranasal sinuses, you can see the mass within the left nasopharynx. Now angiography. Carotid or four vessel angiography that is two carotids and two vertebral will show the vascular nature of the tumor. It's the feeding vessels and extension of the tumor. In addition during the angiography, this embolization of the feeding vessels with gel form can be done preoperatively to shrink the tumor and reduce the bleeding during the surgery. Biopsy is contraindicated in suspected cases of angiofibroma because it will lead to profuse bleeding as the muscular cord of the blood vessel is absent so it won't be able to contract. This is the angiography.
in the so it will show the feeding vessel the supply is from the internal carotids or the external carotid so we can differentiate now what is the treatment surgical excision is the only treatment of choice where various surgical approaches to the angiofibroma depend on its origin and extension as below that is transenteral transpalatal transmandibular lateral rhinotomy that is lateral to the nose you put the incision then lateral pharyngeal mid facial degloving then endoscopic transpalatal with sublabial that is sardana's approach and transmaxillary lay fort one approach now profuse bleeding with the surgery is the main problem in removal of the tumor so different methods are described to reduce the bleeding that is external carotid artery ligation was employed before the surgery to reduce the bleeding or estrogen therapy for 3 weeks before the surgery is done to reduce the vascularity and now super selective embolization is done prior to the surgery in which after angiography embolization of the feeding vessels is done by the gel foam surgery is performed usually within the 24 to 48 hours after embolization if you delay the surgery more than uh, this 24 to 48 hours the, so what will happen there will be development of the anastomosis with surrounding vessels so whichever vessel you embolize it won't be that much effective because it will now have blood supply from the other anastomotic vessels now other modalities of the treatments are the radiotherapy chemotherapy and hormonal it has radiotherapy has been used as a primary mode of the treatment in very large cases unoperable tumors a dose of 3000 to 3500 cubic gyrus and 15 to 8 infractions is delivered in the 3 weeks tumor regresses slowly in about a year sometimes even it will take 3 years now chemotherapy recurrent and residual lesions have been treated by chemotherapy that is doxorubicin vincristine dacarbizin in combination then hormonal diethyl stilbestrol and flutamide have been used as tumor occurs in males at puberty that's all thank you